Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lachlan and today I'm really excited to talk to you about all my favorite Grumpy Sunshine book recommendations. So these are all romance books and they all have the Grumpy Sunshine trope. Grumpy Sunshine is probably my absolute favorite trope. So a lot of these are also some of my most annotated books. I just, there's something about grumpy fictional men or women. There's something about that personality in books that I just really love. I just find it humorous a lot of times. And yeah, so I'm really excited to talk about these books. I have 16 books in total to talk about, so let's get started. So my first book I have to talk about is one that I think is great for people who are just getting into romance or if you've been reading romance for a long time, it's still a great series in my opinion. And that would be The Stopover by Tail Swan. This follows Emily and Jameson. Jame Jameson, Jameson, I think that's how you say it. The beginning of this book starts off with a one night stand. So you don't have to like wait for the spice to start, but by no means um, insta love because it is a one night stand. And then they go through some time without seeing each other. She just so happens to start working at a company um, a couple months later, I think it might be a couple months or either a year or so later, and it just so happens to be the guy that she slept with ends up being like the owner of the company. He's grumpy, she's sunshine, and it's also touch her and you die vibes. There's also really good groveling that occurs in this book, and I think that's one of the reasons I love this book so much. For me, what got me is the grumpy sunshine, of course, the touch her and you die, and then the groveling. Like the combination of all three of those things, I just cannot. I'm just a sucker, especially for some good groveling. I adore this book. The second book in the series is actually my favorite, which is The Takeover. That one is even better. Oh my god, that book is so good. Um, but yeah, this one is more of the grumpy sunshine trope. Highly recommend. And then we have Colty. It's inevitable for Mariana Zapata to be in this list because she is the queen of not only slow burn but grumpy sunshine. She does it really well in my opinion. This is a sports romance that follows Sal and Colty. Colty is the coach and also this famous soccer player and Sal is on the soccer team and one day Colty ends up being her coach and it's funny because she as a child she was always obsessed with him like she's a big fan of this guy and he ends up being a coach and he's like such an asshole to all the players. He like won't talk to them. He like barely talks. That's another reason I love this book is because quiet men, chef's kiss. Okay, not only grumpy sunshine, but like the quiet ones. Get me every time, okay? My husband is a quiet man. Like there's, I just love quiet men, okay? Colty, very freaking quiet. Like he, oh my God, I was literally squealing because it's just like the way that Mario Zapata describes the looks and then the elbow touches. I just, I was literally convulsing with anticipation. So good. It's also slow burn. And there is a bit of an age gap. Um, and then it's also kind of friends to lovers because they end up becoming friends. And oh my god, this book is just so good. Freaking obsessed with this book. So then we have The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. So this follows Zara and Rowan. And this is a workplace romance, opposites attract, of course, Grumpy Sunshine. Enemies to lovers, hate everyone but you. It's got the billionaire trope. Y'all, this is just so good. So Rowan, in order to get his grandfather's inheritance, he has to kind of lead this company for a certain amount of time. And a part of that is leading these projects for Dreamland, which is essentially Disney World. Um, and so that's where the workplace romance comes into play. And Zara um, obviously it works for him and they end up working on the same project together. Well, he hires her after she accidentally submits a proposal. Like she like gets drunk and then hits a button and then she accidentally sends it to him. And then instead of firing her, he hires her and their dynamic is so good. She's the definition of sunshine and he is the definition of grumpy. And so their dynamic is just really funny. And I was laughing out loud throughout this book. Um, it's not a rom-com per se, but it's really, really funny. Um, it's also slow burn. Well, it's kind of slow burn. It's not like the slowest of slow burns, but like, it's great. Oh my god. I just like was squealing over this book. And then Terms and Conditions, which is the second book, isn't Grumpy Sunshine, but the guy is definitely grumpy. And the girl, um, it's more like, I wouldn't say she's grumpy. It's more like... I don't know, but that, that one is so good too. But this one is just more of like the grumpy sunshine trope to it. Literally, it's so good. The first time I picked this up, I couldn't get into it. I, I was reading it on my Kindle and then like 
I just stopped reading it for whatever reason. I just had a hard time getting into it at first, but then I picked it back up um, because everyone was telling me to read it. And then once I picked it back up, I literally couldn't put it down. Oh my God, it's just, it was just got so good. And then I could not put it down. And then I immediately read Terms and Conditions. Highly, highly recommend the series. There's gonna be a third book coming soon. I don't know when though. So then we have The I Love Hypothesis. And this is another really popular one, but if you haven't heard of it, it's a kind of a workplace romance. It's like student teacher. And this is definitely fake dating and grumpy sunshine. And this follows Olive and Adam. And Olive is a, I think, third year PhD student. Yes, third year PhD candidate. And Adam is a professor. And one day, Olive's best friend is dating Olive's ex, but she doesn't have any more feelings for him. And in order to prove that she doesn't have any feelings for him, she ends up kissing Adam in the hallway one day uh, so that her friend will kind of think that like she's moved on. And so he ends up agreeing to fake date her and oh my god he is just there for her throughout the entire book. Like I loved this relationship so much. I just I thought that they were so cute and the way that he like supported her and just her friends too. I love the friendships in this book. I, I cried at one point, um, there was just like a moment where I was outside by the pool drinking margaritas and something happened that was just so, it made me cry because I loved the friendships and the people that were there for her. So yeah, if you like rom-coms or even if you don't like rom-coms, this is kind of the book that changed my mind about rom-coms and now I love rom-coms. I thought that I used to not like them. Well, I used to not like them until I started reading the ones that are actually good and the ones that I love the humor in. And this one, love the humor, love the romance, love the grumpy sunshine, fake dating, superior, love it, go read it. So then I have Vicious by LJ Shen and this follows Amelia and Vicious. That's kind of his nickname. And this is technically a bully romance. It's also hate to love and best friend's ex-girlfriend. And it also has the billionaire trope to it, which is another chef's kiss trope in my opinion. This was one of the first series that actually got me into, it's not the first, but it's one of the first that got me into reading romance. And so I always like cherish the series, even though it's corny at times and the writing's not always the best, but I still love it. So Amelia is actually the daughter of the help that his family hired to take care of like their estate and their big ass mansion and everything. And they know, they've known each other for a while. They never liked each other. Until a certain point. I love Vicious so much. I think he was one of the first grumpy men that I read. And oh my god. It's been a while since I read this. I don't remember the bullying being like extreme or anything like that. It's just kind of like there. And then combined with like him being a total asshole. And then Amelia being like this sweet girl from a small town. And... It's just so good. This takes place, I think, in New York City. Yeah, so they're in New York and it's just, it's really good. I think if you want like a good series to binge, this is one of them. Uh, it's also on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have Kindle Unlimited, check it out. Next up is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This one follows Brie and Archer. And this one is light on the grumpy sunshine, but it's still kind of there. So uh, Brie is definitely sunshine. And one day she moves to a new town to kind of like start over because she's not happy. And she ends up meeting Archer and Archer's mute. He doesn't talk for unknown reasons that you end up finding out when you read the book. He's just like very to himself. And so he can come off as a jerk, even though he's like not meaning to be. This definitely has small town vibes. So if you really like small town romances, Sorry, the glare is like really bad. Um, okay, anyway. If you like small town romances, you'll probably love this. It's very cozy. I remember just like feeling so cozy reading this. Archer is also a virgin, so it's got the virgin hero and then hate everyone but you. Um, this book made me cry, but I did read it after reading a really sad series. So I think I was still like emotional from that. Yeah, so good. Whenever I read this, I read it with my friend Jess uh, as a buddy read and she gave it five out of five stars. I also gave it five out of five stars. This book will always be special to me just because I love Archer so much. He could literally do no wrong. Next up is From Lukoff with Love and this is a also a sports romance, Rivals to Lovers. It's slow burn. Slow burn. Like I'm telling you, slow, slow, slow burn grumpy sunshine and it also has the caretaking trope to it. This one follows Ivan and Jasmine and Ivan and Jasmine are pretty much like they hate each other so this is like hate to love and one day they're like paired to be ice skate partners 
So it's an ice skating romance, which is really cool because I've never read one like that before. This was also my first Mariana Zapata that I ever read. No regrets. So yeah, they're paired up and their like development is really cute. Um, again, it is really slow. So don't think that you're going to jump into it and it's gonna be like super romantic off the bat because it's not but you see like their development and their they go from hating each other to like being friends who support each other to being lovers and y'all this book is really really sweet like it's got a big family undertone to it I remember I was in the middle of this book and I was like this is not a romance book this is a book surrounded with family and it's about family and blah 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 look it was just very, it was a very slow burn book. So if you're like reading it and you're like, where's the romance? It's just like, you got to read between the lines. It's really good. And I, I, I want to reread it because I read it on my Kindle. So I want to annotate it. Their romance is just really cute and it will make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And that's what we want. At least that's what I want most of the time whenever I'm reading romance. Next up is a really popular one. And I'm sure a lot of people have already read it, but I'm still going to talk about it because I'm obsessed with this book. This was the first Colleen Hoover book I ever read, and that's Ugly Love. By Colleen Hoover, I just said that. So this follows Tate and Miles, and Tate is a nurse, and Miles is a pilot. And they end up meeting one day. They're friends for a while, and they're like, it's friends with benefits, so it's not like slow burn or anything like that. Like it's, uh, and it's not a very long book. Like you can read this in, you know, one sitting. They're just really physically attracted to each other, and... They barely even consider themselves friends. Like the drama that goes down in this book is just, it's so, it's so good. So Tate and Miles kind of agree on like this friendship with just benefits, but obviously they end up falling for each other. And this book also made me ugly cry. So ugly love, ugly cry. Yeah, uh, I totally ugly cried. I didn't know what I was getting into whenever I read this. So yeah, some people say that the relationship is toxic and I can see that's valid. Whenever I read that, it didn't bother me. I was obsessed with them. Um, so yeah, Miles, I would literally die for him. This book is, it's sad, but oh my God, it's just like so good. I have two copies of this. This one's signed. Um, the, the other copy I read in the pool and it got wet. And I still love that copy though because it's well loved. Yeah, this book is really good. I think if you like emotional romances, if you want something that will make you cry, Friends with Benefits, Grubby Sunshine, so good. Next up is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. I gave this book five stars. I absolutely loved it. Um, this is a obviously grumpy sunshine. This one is in third point of view and it's set in a like a coastal, not really beachy, but more like boats and fishermen that kind of vibe. It's set in like a coastal town and Alexis, oh no, her name's not Alexis, her name is Piper, but the author based her personality from Alexis from Schitt's Creek. So if you like that show, if you like Alexis, Piper is where it's at because it's so good. I couldn't help picture Alexis the whole time reading this. It was just so cute. Piper ends up kind of not really getting into trouble, but kind of getting into trouble with her dad. So he sends her to Westport, Washington to kind of gain responsibility and to take care of her father's, which has, who has passed away, his dive bar that is located in this town. So her and her sister go there and she ends up meeting Brendan and Brendan is a captain of He's a captain. Need I say more? And he's a grumpy captain. He's also a widower. Piper is just like this very ditzy, um, airhead, you know, girl, but I still loved her. Oh, and it also reminds me a lot of A Simple Life, if you've ever watched that show with Paris Hilton. This is A Simple Life put into a book. It's so cute. I loved it. I ended up crying at one point. Um, there's just a scene that was kind of like emotional. Um, I have it pretty tabbed too. Like I, I love this book so much. Then we have one I'm, I'm currently reading right now. I am like, I have like a hundred pages until I finish it. The Spanish Love Deception. This is a fake dating. This one follows Catalina and Aaron and it's workplace romance. And uh, Aaron offers to be her date to a wedding so that she doesn't have to go alone. It's in like this wedding takes place in Spain and he goes with her and he's just, he's another quiet fictional man. And I think that's why I'm loving this is because he's just like, he's very quiet. And I'm like, there's something about the quiet ones. This one is also very, 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 very slow burn. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's almost like 
Mara Zapata level slow burn, but just like almost, almost even more. But yeah, this one is really cute so far and I wanted to include it in the video just because I'm almost finished with it. The only thing about it is I, I have noticed it's very wordy. It's very lengthy, like certain things can be said a little bit shorter. However, the Grumpy Sunshine, living for it. And then we have Wait For It by Mara Zapata. This is an age gap and it also has this single mom trope. And of course, Grumpy Sunshine, this follows Diana and Dallas. This one also deals with grief. I ended up crying at one point in this book because I just love how Mara Zapata portrayed grief in this book. I thought it was really well done and it made me cry. It was a sad moment. We had a sad girl moment reading this. There's something to do with socks and this is, you just gotta read it. Loss of sibling, that's not a spoiler, it's kind of on the back of the book. She ends up becoming a single mom uh, in a very sad way. Dallas is there to um, slowly fall in love with her and you guys, this book is giddy. Like it made me giddy but I also, there's something about Mario's Potter's writing where like I could read about these characters doing laundry and mowing the grass and I'm still intrigued so yeah if you like slow burn like Mariah Zapata what are you waiting for it also has Hispanic representation so we love that next up it's Hot House Flower this is actually a book in the middle of a series but I wanted to include it anyway because some people don't know that Reich and Daisy are grumpy sunshine uh Daisy is the epitome of sunshine and Reich is the epitome of grumpy and we love them it's also uh got a nightmare trope to it and age gap as well as friends to lovers so we got to love that and this is a part of the addicted Callaway sister series so if you're not aware of that series I will the reading order right here highly recommend if you like contemporary romance if you like character driven romance stop what you're doing and read the series literally Please. next up is one that I finished just recently and that would be Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This is kind of a newer one for 2022 and this is Grumpy Sunshine. Let me tell you grumpy. The guy is grumpy. This follows Naomi and Knox Morgan. Hello, love that last name. This is a small town kind of raw. It's pretty rom com -y. It's pretty rom com -y. It's slow burn but they do get together like I think within like 200 pages so it's not that slow. There is a case of mistaken identity in this book and Knox is also a rich bearded grumpy, I mean I already said grumpy but he's a rich bearded mountain man so like do I need to say anything else? I really love the humor in this book and also there's a moment where the character cuts her hair to symbolize character development and let me just say like I'm a sucker for that. I don't care how cheesy it is. At one point I was really enjoying the um, pet names that were used in this book. However, I, I remember towards the end I thought that the pet names were a little bit overused just because I think he calls her baby quite a bit if I'm remembering correctly. Something like that. Anyway, if you like Slow Burn, if you like Grumpy Sunshine, do yourself a favor and read this. I was literally screaming, squealing, probably the first like 200 pages. Um, it did, it, it was a little long. I, I will say like this was a little, a little long. Could have been like 100 pages shorter. However, I don't regret reading it. Um, the beginning, I was just so in love. Oh my God. I just, again, I love grumpy asshole men. And he was a, he was a grumpy asshole. So like, we love it. Next up is another Mario Zapata. This is All Roads Lead Here. This one follows Aurora and Rhodes, hence Rhodes, uh, the title. And one day Aurora moves back to her own town. She's from Florida, me too, uh, but she moves to Colorado to her hometown to kind of start over. She rents an apartment from this grumpy ass Mr. Rhodes. I don't know why I call him Mr. Rhodes. It's just Rhodes. Anyway, she rents like a, an apartment slash garage space from him. And so he ends up being like her neighbor slash landlord. And he's got a kid. So he's a single dad. Oh my God. He's also a mountain man. Hence the cover. Grumpy neighbor. It also has a caretaking trope to it. There's a scene in this book where like he takes care of her. Y'all, I, I finished this book months ago and I think about it all the time. Like he does things for her that I'm just like he could I am obsessed with them their relationship was so cute their romance was just so cute the slow burn was chef's kiss at no point did I think that this book was too long 
I tabbed this book like crazy. I just, I, I'm obsessed with it. I also really, really loved the kid in this book. Oh my god, it was so cute. We love a single dad with a cute kid. And we love a cute kid with a single dad. This one also has really good Colorado vibes. Like, she goes hiking a lot to kind of connect with her mother and like spiritually. But yeah, it's like a self-healing. It deals with uh, grief and oh god, this book is just so, so good. Five out of five stars. I loved it. And then we have A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime by Monica Murphy. I've read this one recently. It's a high school bully romance that takes place in a private boarding school. Now it is high school bully romance, so if high school romance isn't your thing, then this one's probably not for you. I don't, honestly, I just wish that authors would like write it them college age because it is a little bit weird sometimes reading about high schoolers getting it on but in my mind I just picture them as college age. This follows Ren and Crew and it's obviously Grumpy Sunshine. Touch her and you die. So good. It's got the bad boy, good girl, the uh, heroine is a virgin but it doesn't have any of that like weird virgin blood thing that goes on in some romance books like that does not happen in this thank god and also the boy falls first in this book it's a reformed playboy love those i will say one of the only things i didn't like about this book is the pet name was a little bit overused for me in my opinion like i don't hate pet names i just wish that they were used more sparingly because Whenever a word is repeated a lot in a book, I just, I'm, I'm like, can you stop saying that word, please? Now, her pet names were really cute, though. I forget what they were. I think it was, like, Birdie. But, y'all, there's groveling that occurred. Well, it's not really groveling, but it's more like the things that he does for her is just so freaking sweet, so cute. Once you read it, you'll understand the cover. Like, I just, I was a simp. I think I gave this four and a half stars. Yeah, it's, it's really cute. This one is really, really sweet. So if you like sweet romances, um, it doesn't really, it, it starts out kind of like a bully romance, but it ends up turning very, very sweet. And the things that he would, he would literally do anything for her. So yeah, if you like that kind of vibe and you romance books, highly recommend this one. Um, he's grumpy. She, I've just realized I didn't have any reverse grumpy sunshine recommendations. I'm gonna have to find some of those. Let me know if you've read any reverse Grumpy Sunshine. So like the girl Grumpy and the guy Sunshine. Yeah. So I have one more book for you guys and that's Under Lock. Now this one is one of the more like definitely toxic ones out of this whole list. I would say this one is probably the most toxic relationship out of all of these books because the guy Locke, well his name is Dex, He's mean. This follows Iris and Dex and Iris starts working for him at his tattoo shop. Um, he's also in a motorcycle club so it has the motorcycle club trope to it. There is a slight age gap in this but I don't think it, it was like I think it was like eight years or something like that if I'm remembering correctly. Anyway he was more than grumpy. He was a grade eight asshole and one thing I, I do wish that had been in this book more is groveling. I wish we had got more groveling, but the sex in this book, you guys, wow, it was just so good. Oh my god, I mean, he has his <clears throat> pierced. Yeah, do I really need to say anything else? Out of this whole list, this is the one that I rated the lowest. I ended up giving this three stars, but I still recommend it because y'all, yeah. this. The sex in here was really good and there is the one bed trope in this book so there is like a scene where yeah that happens only other thing i'll say is i wish he hadn't called her babe so many times uh the babe thing was overused but again grumpy sunshine still recommend it if you are not one who really hates the toxic men he's very toxic so if you like that then check this out. So that's it for my Grumpy Sunshine book recommendations. I feel like I'm probably leaving something out. I probably am forgetting something. I most definitely am, but that's okay. I'll have another one of these videos at some point. Let me know if you like this. Um, I can do more book recommendation videos. I don't know what I'm doing. If you did like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know if you end up reading any of these, if you end up 
liking them or if you end up hating them, let me know because I'm always curious um, as to what like people's tastes are and what other people enjoy or don't enjoy. And I will see you guys in my next video.